Okay, everybody, welcome to Splice Beta Online. This is day two for us, session number three. I almost it lost is. track of that. It's, uh, <laughs> it's here we go. There's a lot more coming up. Uh, so you know, it's it's a it's a full month of Splice Beta. We are pacing ourselves just because we we're starting to lose it ourselves and being in this little closet over here, recording all of this. Um, this is us. Uh, you can see us both. Rashad and I are, are on screen. Shirley is hiding behind the scenes, trying to make sure that everything goes smoothly. Shirley's the one who is not just uh, making all of this look great, but she's also the one responding in the in the chat box over there. So, you know, she'll be uh, presenting links, uh, sending it out there. Uh, helping you guys navigate this space. And by the way, Shirley is the one that designed our roller disco background over here. Uh, lights and all. We're if you like this, this look, we can send Shirley over, and she <laughs> will, you know, recreate this background. Steal this look. We don't do digital backgrounds. We do real backgrounds. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Organic, handcrafted. Okay, Rashad. All right. Hey. Um, you know, just for those of you who don't know us, um, uh, we we're Splice, and we we are a little startup based in in Singapore. Uh, Alan and I co-founded this about five years ago, and the reason we did this is because we want to celebrate um, diversity in media, diversity in media startups. We want, uh, uh, especially uh, um, with a with a um, focus on media startups in in Asia. So Splice Beta for us is this, well, let, let's call it an experiment. Um, we want to bring together the ecosystem because we believe that you can't talk about media without talking about all the other components to it, which could include funding, which could include ed tech, which could include you know, universities. Uh, it takes an effort by the industry to, to really drive the transformation of, of something that we all care about. Uh, so beta is where it all happens. This is um, this is a celebration of what media startups are doing across the region. It's a chance for us to bring together partners like uh, like Facebook today, uh, just because we believe like you know this is really the best way to to move the industry forward. So in terms of the sessions, we have over forty sessions uh, lined up all across this month. Uh, four to six speakers or so, give or take. We haven't quite closed up a number. I know Alex, you have an email that's that's in my inbox about another session that we need to, to sort out. So we'll get that one done. Um, but what we're most proud of is the fact that we've got gender balance in our speaker lineup, 50% female, 50% male. This is really something that that means a lot to us. Uh, and we're really proud that everyone else has, you know, has, has supported us on that front. Uh, there are five stacks. So every single day has a different theme to it. Uh, you know, take a look at our website. Uh, splicebeta.com slash program uh, if you want to get all the latest details on what's coming up uh, throughout this entire month. And when, um, you know, when Alan said stacks, um, essentially we're talking about themes. Um, Mondays are business and strategy, Tuesdays are products, Wednesdays are audiences um, and users, Thursdays are about management and operations, and for Fridays, every Friday we have something on media careers. And tomorrow, we've got a session by uh, Kareel Lahir Lahiri yep. from NBIF. He's going to be talking about how you need to run media businesses as a business. So you know, I think this is going to be very useful for a number of you who are starting up or, or are in the midst of, of building out a, uh, a media business. So that's on tomorrow. We also have a second session tomorrow uh, with um, Alex, who's right here with us, and Tan Lee Chin who is the COO of Sinchu Daily, um, they're going to be talking about how they m monetize their Facebook audience through instant articles. And uh, I'm really excited by, by Lee Chen just because she started out as a, as a reporter, uh, made her way up to, uh, to COO at Sinchu Daily, where she runs the digital properties uh, of the organization, but is also responsible for, for the transformation of, of the business. So that comes up tomorrow, uh, 7 PM Singapore time. So amazing. Hey, listen, um, we're nowhere without these wonderful people who sponsor us. Um, they've believed in us. Thank you so much, Facebook Journalism Project. Um, Conrad Adenauer Stiftung have been an immense support through this entire thing. 
um, all of our partners, including Google, Luminate, NDIF, AFP, FOYO Institute, and our friends at IMS. I want to also, here's a huge shout out to the folks at click to view who are helping us with all the video production and all the recordings you will see on our YouTube channel. Um, also, Puma Podcast, who are our podcast partners. We've just started doing a little podcast called Splice Pink. We'll be putting uh, a lot of the episodes and a lot of our interviews and stuff with you folks on Splice Pink. Thank you so much, people. I'll and take us through ground rules. So a number of quick ground rules to, to, uh, to bear in mind here. If you are tweeting, we would encourage you to do that because it helps uh, get this content out to, to more people. If you're tweeting, please use the Splice Beta hashtag. Uh, if you're speaking, headphones, uh, microphones are always helpful. Uh, leave your comments, your questions, and links in the chat box. The chat box is also a great place to introduce yourselves. Uh, leave your email addresses in there because you know part of all of this is to make sure that people get to know each other, to start networking with each other. Uh, so leave your email addresses there. Put yourself on mute when you're not uh, speaking. If not, Shirley will do that on your behalf. Um, all of this stuff, by the way, is recorded. All of this stuff will be made available on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page. Uh, also keep in mind that sometimes you know weird stuff happens um, with these things. People have porn bombed us before. If it happens, let's all pretend it never happened. Uh, let's all look away and get on with it. Uh, perhaps most importantly, please be kind and be generous. This is a really difficult time for a lot of media companies out there, a lot of, of uh, media professionals in, in our space. Uh, we're all here to learn from each other, so be kind, be generous, uh, and let's learn from, from everyone. And with that, Nikki Meek. Um, how to build a brand and a community on Instagram. Nikki uh, joins us from Instagram Asia Pacific. Nikki, over to you. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. Now I'm going to attempt to screen share with my keynote. <laughs> Hopefully this will work. And yay, I think that is it the awesome. screen and not my notes. Hopefully, fantastic. <laughs> All right, let's get started. So we're here to talk about Instagram today. First of all, my name is Nikki Meek and I am the SPM for APAC. Uh, that's a lot of letters and basically what that means um, is I'm based in Singapore. Uh, my remit is all of APAC and essentially we work with partners on their organic content strategies. Um, pretty much simply uh, we help them use the platform the very best that they can to hit their goals. And everybody has very different goals. As you know, we're dealing cross verticals, um, cross markets. Uh, APAC's a busy and complex place. So they keep me very busy. I'm excited that this is working. We just moved apartments like five seconds ago. So my partner was trying to set up the internet this morning <laughs> so that I could be here. So I'm very, very grateful that the internet is working. Um, Speaking of which, we've all had to adapt to working at home. Uh, so what we're going to touch on first is IG in the time of COVID. Specifically, let's talk about live. Um, it's gone crazy. And it's just because people are leaning into it for a lot of different reasons. So I think it's worth highlighting. Um, and then we're going to jump into finding new audiences and your account strategy overall. And then we'll leave some time at the very end for a Q&A. Uh, I think Alex already has some questions that he wants to ask me. He always does. Um, but if anybody else has questions, I, I suppose post in the chat group um, and we can hopefully get to a couple of them. First things first, Instagram is a big place that over a billion people are using. And half of those people are using stories every single day, <clears throat> which is quite crazy. And it means a majority of the produc production and consumption on the app is sort of moving away from feed and towards stories. So stories will mention a lot throughout this conversation. It's definitely a big part of where you find that sort of next gen. Um, but the good news for everyone in this room is one in six people follows a publisher on Instagram. So that is wonderful. We know that you can connect with people here and that you have a great shot at your content being super successful with those audiences. Uh, the other theme that you're going to come across as we talk through this entire deck is um, people, it's just a matter of fact, draw higher engagement than brands. Um, so when we're talking CNN, you compare the engagement to that of Anderson Cooper or Bonnet Appetit Mag 
or the cut to you know their talent and journalists that they have um, it's it, it is what it is and so unfortunately for people that have like business accounts or um, you know show accounts or teams you have to lean into those individuals around you um, essentially on the platform that is Instagram everybody looks the same and as you're scrolling through feed you're not thinking to yourself oh is that a, a sports team is that a business is that a person is that my auntie you're just thinking do i like that or do i not like that so the theme of the content today is very much centered around publishers but it will talk a lot about how you need to lean into faces and into individuals and this is why so i just wanted to start with that up front so that you don't think that all oh, this content is not as relevant to you but there's a ton of ways that you can do that and a lot of fun things that you can do. So what have we learned in the times of COVID-19? First of all, engagement. Engaging with people in the digital space becomes more important than ever. And Instagram is really a platform that's built on two-way interactions. Um, it, it really relies on you knowing, uh, you showing that you are important to your audience and that your audience is important to you in order to rank feed. So it's important that as a publisher account, you are still interacting with content and you can do that in a ton of different ways on feed, you can like uh, comments, you can comment on comments, you can make sure that you're creating content that is inciting conversation and topical discussion. Uh, you can use polling stickers, Q&A stickers and stories, lots of, lots of different ways. Um, but make sure you're engaging with the community because everybody, especially during these times, is super keen for that. The second thing, and I won't hover too long on this because I have a whole section on, uh, on live, it's my favorite tool on the platform, first of all, so I'm very excited it's doing as well as it's doing. It's taken off to a place we never expected for all types of accounts, and we'll go through uh, in, in regards to why in just a little bit, and sharing. So this is really the space where we've seen everybody taking the time to personify, letting people into the behind the scenes, into the real stories and showing them a different side of yourself during this time. Um, I think everybody just wants to emotionally connect, lean into content, understand people um, and topics more than ever. And they have a little bit more time in a lot of ways to do that. But without further ado, let's get into live. Why is live smashing it? And this is one of the most important tools for the next generation too. Um, they love live. It's a very much in the moment. And why you need to do these lives is it brings people together. It's super in the moment. It's personal. It's the most flexible surface. And when I say this, I think a lot of people get terrified of live because they think, oh my gosh, it's so much pressure. It's in real time. But actually, if your live went terribly, you can just exit out of it and it's never seen again. However, if it went really well, you can repurpose it into an IGTV. So it's extremely flexible and it's also the only surface on the platform that sends push notifications. So it lets you know that somebody is going live, uh, which is always a great tool for engagement and to make sure people are checking in. It also has bespoke tools like the question and answer sticker, which is amazing. So basically ahead of time, you can use the Q&A sticker in stories to say, um, I don't know, what um, what does everyone want to hear about today? And then people will write their responses. And then when you do your live, you can actually tap into all of the questions that people have asked you uh, to answer them. So this can be extremely useful for publishing houses um, or, or, you know, sort of, a way to skew towards things that are more factual or interview style. Um, and then secondly, it has a media picker. So that means that you can use any video or photo from your gallery and project it onto your live. And then you will go little uh, into the screen or your journalist or whoever's presenting, whatever image it is, goes um, into a small screen. And that gallery image that you've selected will uh, become the big image. So you can show videos and photos. And then last but not least, you can go live with. So this is, again, another really wonderful mechanism for interviewing um, during these times when everybody can't meet up. In terms of best practices, some new tips and tricks is sharing to IGTV. So lives don't uh, go to stories any longer, but they are now shared within IGTV. Um, and just note that comments and questions will be removed. 
you can give your live a title, which is super helpful if people are coming in throughout the live so that they know exactly what it is that they're watching. Um, and then coming soon, and this is not yet, this is TBD, it will be a way that you can engage uh, with something um, in live that allows you to pay. That's not for right now, but we'll be doing a small test uh, with view to get that actioned further, which is very exciting. And I know that there's probably going to be a lot of questions on that. Uh, live, before you go live, um, give followers advance notice during feed and stories. So I think going live at specific times is always helpful because people know to tune in. Um, but it's always wise. It's not mandatory, so you don't have to overthink it, but it's always wise to just give people a heads up in your stories or use the countdown sticker, which is also really helpful, just to let them know when to tune in. And it sounds silly, but make sure you have a strong connection for a high quality stream because we know there's nothing worse than it kind of going in and out and being very jolty. And then if you want to save the recording of your live or live with, with the comments and likes, turn on do not disturb mode and you can screen record your broadcast and then it will keep that for you uh, in, your, in your gallery saved down to your phone. In terms of live, during, um, during a live, you get up to an hour, turn on the comment moderation because we want a positive community experience and we'll talk through a couple ways to keep your account safe at the very end of the presentation, but it's super important um, to facilitate a positive community experience. Uh, pin a comment to the top of your live. We now have titles, but you can also pin a comment to the top of the live um, to explain what you're talking about. And then you can also pin someone else's comment if you just think it's better than yours, and then they can use that instead. And as I said, try a live Q&A, so enable that sticker or use the media sharing. And this is a heads up because I get this question a lot. Nobody can see what's in your camera roll as you're selecting an image from your gallery. So it's very safe for the community once again. Um, save your live down to your camera roll. So um, that will mean that if you want to save your live with comments and questions, you need to screen record. But if you want to save it down without them, you can do that through the actual within Instagram. And then, as we said, you can share to IGTV, which is exciting, and then promote your IGTV video and stories. Um, so your stories preview will autoplay the first 15 seconds because of um, its mechanism to link to IGTV. And then uh, it will count towards your views and people will know to link out and where to go and view it, which is extremely exciting. So what should you do to get started with live now that we talked about how exciting it is? Um, I think the things that are doing really well are sneak peeks and Q&A sessions. Um, Q&A sessions every week, especially within the publishing uh, arena, do really well. They perform really well. Um, in terms of sharing, this is something that we would recommend um, when you're getting, you know, if you're a journalist or you have a journalist that's extremely popular on your accounts, it's just really important that they're connecting um, and, and talking about relevant things to their audience. You could give a sneak peek of an upcoming project and then sharing tutorials is so popular. So any like behind the scenes stuff, any how to do things is working really well. Um, and then live with, as, as we said, a really good way to interview people um, and to find out uh, whatever you need to uh, with around the world. So in terms of a summary, I think sneak peeks, Q&A sessions, and making sure where you can, you put a person to it. Um, I know this can be tricky depending on uh, who you have at your fingertips, but try to figure it out and also take time and if you can use the same person so that your audience can get to know that specific reporter um, or journalist, that's I think super important because then they build a rapport uh, and they go looking for that person every week and they feel a connection. In terms of finding your next audience and building your... Um, 2015 was around the time when many publishers created their Instagram accounts, but it was such a different place. The app at the time was a niche photo app and it was dominated by perfect landscape shots um, and photographers or, you know, selfies with friends even back in those days. But you had to like flip it around and they were, sometimes took 15 in order to get your face exactly in the frame. 
Uh, but it, it's now 2020 and Instagram is a place where culture happens. So Chrissy Teigen is shooting a selfie style video in her apartment with wine um, and you know we're getting to places that we haven't been able to go before. And sometimes we still hear publisher accounts of, are run by their photo teams, but we're encouraging you to think more like Chrissy Teigen and, and, and rather cling to that old idea that Instagram is the place for perfect photos. It's actually the place to be real um, and, and to be in the moment. In terms of using Instagram to reach your next audience, in your in-app insights, you can see the age breakdown of your followers. And we really encourage you to focus on the first two buckets. Uh, for the most part, I think people have their audience thereafter figured out pretty well. Um, there's a lot of information on that, but where people are trying to drive is the 13 to 24 audience. And really Instagram is the place to do that. So the first way you can do this, and I said it, <laughs> 17 times, and I'm going to say it 17 more times, first person. So these are the, the, um, the most followed accounts on Instagram. And as you'll notice, they are people. Um, so it, it's tricky, I know, but where you can try to find somebody in your newsroom, that can become the face of your account. Uh, and shout out to Nat Geo being the only publisher in the 100 million followers club. I think almost everyone else is individual which makes sense because Instagram is a place where people are going to follow friends and family. We used to see faces and that's what people connect with. So we just have to figure out how to manipulate that to make the most of the platform. So here's some examples of how we've seen reporters and journalists engaging. Sorry, the sound will speak over me. Um, but these are also some good accounts to follow. So now this is news and the New York Times. And then trend two is designed for sharing. So memes get shared seven more times than any other content on Instagram. And you may laugh when, when we say that, but memes are actually full of information. A lot of times they're extremely cultural, extremely topical, and they're talking about something that's really relevant and in the moment. Um, so think through how you can do something. This is how you drive virality. It's something that's really shareable. And this is what stories look like these days. They're no longer just pictures or dropped cakes on the floor or whatever it might be. They're pretty information saturated. So you have a lot of creative tools within Instagram. Um, the first being that you can link to your IGTV, you can link to feed posts, you can type whatever you want, you can repurpose images, you have um, you know, color blocks you can put over things, you can take screenshots and really change how they look for stories too. We have an entire school that's called Story School. There's so many tools that you can use. Um, so really, when you're thinking about stories, don't think about it like it's a silly thing where you go to see like cats and dogs, although we love that too. It's actually a really um, significant tool that can, that can share information and also link out to other spaces. And when you're thinking feed posts too, don't just think about a photo, think about posts that are worth sharing. You're there to start a million conversations and for people to want to get inspired and to share your content with people. Um, this content can be carousel posts with multiple images. Um, it can be a dramatic visual or it can be information saturated. Um, so 17 used the carousel really well. I'm getting through these tough times and you're able to flick through and see um, you know, how to schedule your seven days. Um, and, and then the, the statement visual from the New York Times is pretty striking. It's their front page moment. And obviously seeing that, you then want to go and find out how you can read that because potentially that holding that zoom in on Instagram isn't going to cut it for you. So the first thing you're going to do is go to New York Times. The third thing is investing in community. So as we talked about, Instagram Live saw a 70% increase in usage from March to April 2020, which is crazy. And Dean Nice was one of the heroes of this live space who kept us all happy um, and, and did some wonderful sets for us to enjoy. Um, but in terms of publishers, the shade room uh, in terms of interaction and community and, and what they do is they try to respond to every DM. Hopefully you have the time. If you don't, 
maybe just some or every comment or you could like every um, comment on a post, whatever it might be that you decide to do, just keep consistent with it. Um, and then director Ava DuVernay hosted a screening. Um, the series When They See Us came out and so they decided to have her personally host um, a screening on uh, the Array page, which was really exciting and very successful. And then Dallas News started a COVID newsletter. And what they did was they actually used the close friends tool to allow people to subscribe to that newsletter so that they knew that they were targeting people that would be very interested in getting those updates because it could be a little irrelevant for some people or people might not want to hear about COVID. It just depends. But that close friends tool is a really unique thing you can use. And then this is my favorite. So fundraising is only available in some arenas you can use different websites and tools to do this um, but essentially bon appetit mag did a live dinner party and they raised i'm just going to get off that video so you can hear me they raised a ton of money um you can do it through gofundme if you don't have access to fundraising uh through instagram in your territory but you might through facebook so check in um, and make sure that you know what you have and um that means that they were able to connect with the community and it was also one wonderful content creation um, moment for them. So they had different chefs doing different courses. There was stories posted about it. They did an IGTV series. So you can go check that out um, and think about creative ways to fundraise during this time. In terms of profile, um, I cannot highlight enough how often I look at people's profile pages and I think you have this perfect brand real estate here and you need to utilize it properly. This is an example of a, um, a journalist uh, reporter take on it, but you should be doing the same with the publishing main publishing page too. So first of all, you have stories, a rainbow ring that lights up whenever you're producing stories to let people know the content is there. Secondly, you have this bio space. Um, and a good bio makes a difference. People only follow you if they understand what you're about, what your account is all about. And this is a really easy way to do this. You have links out to other people's accounts. So she has um, added Real Simple and Health Magazine there. We know she's the beauty director of there them. Uh, obviously Chunk is her dog because she's used her emojis really well and we don't even need to like know Chunk to know we probably want to go to that hashtag. It's going to be really cute. So that's a clickable hashtag. That could be anything. So um, you can use something relevant to your newsroom there. Uh, and then she has another hashtag, which uh, you probably want to find out what that is all about. But that looks like it's relevant to her. Um, and then a website link, which is super important. And then in terms of highlights, these should be your main beats. Um, this should sh sum up the main interest categories that you post about. Um, and Last but not least, and I cannot stress this enough, do not obsess over your grid. Your grid needs to be there to show people what your account is all about. It does not need to be perfect by any means. Um, and just flagging that now if you're in a territory that has reels um, or the same works for IGTV, you can actually delete uh, the feed previews or the reels preview off your main grid so that it's not sitting there as well as in another space and it won't impact distribution. So just flagging that for accounts that are heavily using IGTV previews and or reels. In terms of the anatomy of a story, this is just a little a bit of a bonus. Um, so always, as we said, if you put a face to it, start with a selfie style intro. Um, when we talk about the anatomy of a story, it's really nice to serialize where you can. Um, use short, punchy display copy throughout so people know what's happening. Include location tags and hashtags and use those interactive tools. It's a really quick way to connect with people and make them feel like they're important and they get to vote on things. Even though you're only giving them two options in a polling sticker, people feel very liberated by that. <laughs> Mix up visuals. Um, oh, and also on that last point, it's a great way to get them to do the work for you so that you, you know what content they want to see more of, um, you know what they are thinking, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's a really good polling way. 
to get information. Uh, mix up your visuals. You've got photos, your boomerangs, you can do videos, you can do screen grabs. There's so many different things you can do. Um, and embrace the gift. We're talking about an audience between 13 and 24 and they connect with gifts. And there's actually a lot of factual, interesting gifts that add information, but then there's also some silly light ones that you can use or some visual effects. Um, and just also a heads up in stories, if you swipe all the way, if you go to filters where the bunny ears live, if you swipe all the way to the very end, there's an, a search glass. And if you click on that search glass, it will open up your world to a ton of AR filters that you can use. They're searchable. So there's things like green screen, which for a reporter is amazing because you can put a video behind you and like report from somewhere. If there's like a game going on, you can put the stadium behind you, whatever works. Um, and then use the swipe up link. Make sure you're doing that so that people can go out to your website. You, we understand that you want to drive people to other places. So we've given you the tool to do that and involve the community. So we've talked about that at length. I won't reiterate that any longer, but um, this is just a starting point. So if you're not doing all of these things right now, you have homework to do. Uh, but last but not least, you should be using all surfaces on the platform. And it's my number one tip to people when they say, how can I increase my distribution? How can I grow followers? And I say using all four surfaces and usually if they're not lying to me, they'll admit that they don't. Um, and there's usually one or two that they can improve on. So in terms of how the over a billion people use Instagram, it, there's one simple answer. It's differently. You're dealing with humans. They all have different behaviors. So to get maximum reach, you need to be using feed, stories, live, and IGTVs. There's people that only watch IGTV. There's people that only scroll through feed. And make sure you're talking across the different surfaces to let people know when you've created content. And if you're in Japan or Australia, this is what you should be doing. You have extra homework. You need to be using all five surfaces. Um, so in terms of feed, how we think about that is that should be highlights. Um, we, we talked at length about profile. This links into that. It's got to be a, a representation of what your account is all about. Stories are about engagement in real life, but they're also extremely factual and shareable and in the moment, and they can link us out to different places like IGTVs or to your website. And then live is about being in the moment, behind the scenes, IGTV series, it's storytelling. Um, it's a, it can be a little bit more produced, but you can still shoot on a mobile, no problems. The platform is built for that. And then last but not least, our brand new baby reels. So this is about entertaining and about trending. This is where you can uh, really lean into a lot of new tools that we've built for, for you to uh, create a new style of video that's a bit shorter. It's our answer to short form video. Um, and we have hashtag pages that you can look at. We have music pages you can look at. So make sure you play around with Reels. Um, it's brand, brand new. So we're learning from all of you on how to use Reels ourselves. Uh, it's an exciting space to be in and it's really important to be a first mover if you can be uh, on any of the tools. That's how you get youth also. They're always in the new spaces. A little cheat sheet for you because this question I get a lot. How often should I post and what should I post? Um, when you're thinking about feed, it should be once a day. And this is photos and videos. Uh, and we should really want uh, really prompt discussion where we can. Um, and then in terms of stories, you should be able to do five to eight per narrative. We just talked a little bit before about the anatomy of a story. So hopefully that answers for you how you can uh, go about posting multiple stories um, in, in one session, so to speak. But this should be in the moment updates and also interactive stickers. Uh, they are a secret weapon. They're full of information uh, and they're really interesting. And then in terms of IGTV, these uh, people tend to want to produce a little bit more. As I said, you don't have to, but as long as you're doing one a week, um, and this is where you can think about series. And often if you're doing something, even if it's something every Wednesday where you're going to interview somebody, that's a series in itself. It doesn't have to be super prescriptive, um, but it can help you to think of ideas um, or it could be like learn a new skill every Thursday um, or it could be a, a weekend wrap up on a Monday, whatever, whatever it is, it's really easy to serialize and then you have the theme running. And then last but not least, our favorite live, 
Uh, we've got once a month here. It depends on your audience. I think if you're trying to go for this younger audience, I would recommend a little bit more than that. Um, audience Q&A or live selfie style conversations, wonderful for this space. But at the end of the day, it has to be sustainable. So the key to all of this stuff, you can throw it out the door. If you can't manage this as a schedule, then you just need to reduce it and be consistent. Um, that's super important. And the other thing I want to say is mix photos and videos and emphasize vertical, not horizontal images. They're just more dynamic and they take up more real estate on the phone. So they're more engaging. Um, and also, if you're going to try anything new, like you're starting a live or an IGTV series, the rule is three months. Three months you need to give it for your audience to adjust. Uh, don't do one live and say, well, only 40 people joined. I'm over it. When you think about it, how long it takes you to, you know, reply to 40 posts, like 40 posts, it's, it's a lot of effort. But going live and having 40 people connect with you straight away, that's wonderful. And it's an engagement moment and it's a really good strength moment for a building audience. In terms of growth tactics on platform, engage with other accounts in your space. They will engage back with you. Um, and it's really important to tell feed ranking that, that you're important to them and they're important to you. But also, it drives this community spirit. You can also cross promote from your brand account, um, publisher account to a reporter account. Make sure you're talking to each other. Use those hashtags and geotags. When we talk about what hashtags to use and what geotags to use, generally speaking, um, make them meaningful. And I always use this example, which Alex hates because I follow the New England Patriots, which is an American football team that he does not like very much. Um, but when I think about, uh, as a Patriots fan, what hashtag I want to follow, hashtag New England Patriots is pretty broad. It's a little bit vague. People get spammy with it because they think that they're going to get distribution. I'm a Patriots fan, so I know that hashtag Pats Nation is the, the, the hashtag for fans. So that middle hashtag there is like the sweet spot because pretty much 95% of content is going to be really relevant for me. Um, and then maybe like a hashtag like Edelman Rules or something like that, Edelman's a player. That's pretty niche. 100% of the content will probably be relevant to me, uh, but it may not be that broad and it's only about one player. So when you're thinking about like a hashtag that's going to suit your content, think in that middle space where it's going to be relevant to the audience and they're going to want to follow that hashtag to get all of the updates. Um, and then also geotags when relevant. Um, make sure that you're utilizing those. Instagram's built on, on these hashtags and geotags. It's really important for discoverability. But what we don't want is so many that they feel spammy. Um, that then leads to unfollows and uh, different markets have different tolerance to the amount of hashtags. If you're in Australia, the bad news is there's a low tolerance for them. If you're in Indonesia, the good news is there's a high tolerance for them. So just find your sweet spot. Um, and then capitalize on relevant moments. So if there's award season coming in, there's a new football season starting up, there's an election going on, really make uh, the most of those uh, and create series around them and keep people up to date. And as we talked about length, shareable content is king. Everybody goes for likes and everybody goes for comments as like, you know, a success metric, but shares and saves are worth more in terms of engagement uh, for feed ranking. So make sure you're creating content that's easy to share and don't ignore uh, those as metrics, which you can see in your insights if you are on a creator or business account. And then in terms of off-platform, embed your posts into on-site articles, Make sure you're publicizing your, your handle uh, and, you know, try to go viral if you can create some cool information, relevant memes. That's always really exciting. And my favorite topic, it's one of the last slides, so I know I've talked a lot, but this is so important if you can remember anything. Please, please, please make sure that you have two-factor authentication turned onto your account. It is the only way to keep your account safe from being hacked. People always try to tell me that they need to be verified so that they can keep themselves safe from being hacked. That makes your account more likely to be hacked because people want that real estate with the blue tick. So turn on two fact. Obviously, a lot of you um, uh, run accounts that multiple, multiple people access. 
So you can turn on what we call three fact using uh, like a Google Authenticator or Duo or something like that so that you can get codes and multiple people can access, but it's still very safe. Um, regularly check emails from Instagram. So I'm not sure if you know this, but in your security settings, if you go to settings, and then into security, there's something called emails from Instagram. And this will tell you what emails you've received from Instagram. So if you're wondering if something you got was legitimate or not, go straight here and don't respond to anything that isn't listed here, um, unless obviously you have requested a password change or something and it's prompting the two-factor or the three-factor authentication, that would be different. Um, but you should know the mobile number that's going to, so it should be pretty obvious. Turn on comment moderation. So in settings and privacy, there's a comments section. Uh, there's a blanket one that you can switch on and we'll just make all of the comments safe. Uh, well, there's a, there's a whole library of comments. However, you can have um, a lot of control over this. So everybody's a little bit different. And if there's a specific topic that you're receiving bullying like comments or harassment on, you're able to type in keywords that the system will recognize and also um, block. And the best news is if you're super, um, you know, I always use this example because it's neutral, but if you're, I'm super offended by bananas and Alex or you, you is trying to troll me and they want to type on one of my posts, banana, banana, banana. I've already put banana into my custom keywords. And essentially, you, you and Alex will think that they got away with typing banana. They'll see it on my post, but I won't see it and my followers won't see it. So in this sense, nobody's offended by the outrageous comment banana, but you, you and Alex as trolls aren't um, antagonized or don't set up secondary accounts or get mad at me because I've blocked that word. So really, really lean into this for safety. And then use restrict mode. So this protects yourself from unwanted interactions and the person isn't gonna know that you've hidden their comments. Just means that you don't have to see them. My very last slide and your homework for today is don't forget swipe ups, utilize swipe ups. Go and check that you have links in your bio and that you're using links in your IGTV description. At mention your partners and journalists when you are uh, creating content and reshare follower content. Again, a really good way to connect with the community and they've done all the work for you. This is anything your app mentioned in should come up and allow you to reshare. Cross post to Facebook, Alex and you, you'll be very happy to hear me say that. You can do this with feed, you can do this with stories, you can do this with IGTV. And I think in the coming months, you, you will be able to do this with live too. And then post across surfaces in Instagram. So make sure you're using IGTV preview and feed, using stories links, and you are going live. Thank you. I will <laughs> stop talking at you now, and hopefully you can ask the questions that you're dying to ask. Awesome, Nikki. Thank you so much. I'm exhausted. <laughs> no, that was fantastic. I, you know, it, the first thing I want to say is, um, Alan, how bad are we at Instagram? <laughs> um, we're awful, we suck, we really want to get better at this. Yeah. The second thing I want to say very quickly, right up, we've got massive amount of questions for you, but the first thing I want to say is, Nikki, are you okay to share the deck um, um, that you just presented? We don't share decks, but I believe you're recording this session, so people can okay. go watch it as many we'll times as they like, well. and hear my mm -hmm. wonderful Good. and soothe them to sleep, wake them up in the morning, whatever they need. <laughs> That's well, that's amazing. fantastic. Alan, do you want to um, start with yeah. uh, Mariam's question? So yeah, we've got a whole bunch of questions here, you know, uh, and, and you know, to, to your point earlier that we don't know what we're doing on Instagram. It's absolutely true. As a B2B service, we, it's hard for us to figure out what to do on our Instagram. By the way, here's a little plug for, for all of you. We are Splice Asia on Instagram. Uh, if that even helps, we don't. We only have like four pieces of content that we posted on it because we don't know what the hell we're doing on it. Uh, but I think I know your answer to that. Your answer would be: don't post about splice. Post about yourselves, probably. But I'm not gonna take that from you know take the time away from you. So let me get to the first question. Uh, Mariam Chaudhary from uh, Pakistan was asking: Is there a way to connect your Instagram and Facebook Live the same way we would share stories simultaneously? Uh, would be great if you can do that across live as well. Yes, I agree. And we've built it, we're testing it, um, and it should be rolling out 
shortly so that you can share from Instagram over to Facebook Live. It will roll out across markets. Couldn't agree with you. Fantastic. Fantastic. We have another, I'm go we're going to go slightly quick, quickly. We've got about seven minutes left for the end of the session. We can roll over for folks who do have time, but I'll make this quick. Um, Ratri from Kata Data uh, is asking, saying, hi, Nikki. All, um, people try to make IG Live look as much like broadcasting as possible, and they're using software like OBS, etc. Sometimes, because it's illegal to make IG Live look more like that, uh, it crashes in the middle of life. Uh, could this method emphasize engagement? Would this be better for engagement? I have to tell you that actually we have the opposite feedback for lives uh, on Instagram. This may be the case for Facebook. Alex, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the differentiation point often is uh, on Facebook, it's nice to have a more broadcast feel to your lives. For Instagram, they want like that real behind the scenes uh, feel. Even CNN just shoots with their mobile. It's crazy. So um, I would really recommend that for your Instagram, Instagram lives, you're not overthinking it and you're not overproducing it. Sorry, I know that's not the answer that you want, but it's the reality and we want your content to do well. So <laughs> maybe have a play around with some more casual lives and see how you go. Cool. A question from Ritika. Uh, hey, Nikki, are there specific ways, tips, tricks for small grassroots publishers, grassroots publishers to get on the Explore page? of the potential audiences. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Yeah. Explore being <laughs> my favorite topic. So what a lot of people don't realize, because um, why would you? It's a, an algorithm built by engineers, is that we've designed this feed ranking system on Instagram so that we all have unique experiences that are built and tailored and customized to us. Um, so that what that means is there's a billion people using the platform, there's a billion different explore pages and a billion different um, uh, feed ranking experiences. We've even had people that take two accounts, follow the same accounts, like the same posts, comment on the same, um, comment exactly the same things, and they still have different explore pages because it's impossible to kind of mirror it exactly. You might spend longer on one page or click back onto another page. So the, the, the system for explore is built on the same system that our feed ranking works on, which is the algorithm, the, everyone's favorite word. Um, and there's over 500 signals that go into building this and it's really designed from individual to individual. So there's not a way you can get on Explore. You could get on Alex's Explore, but you won't be on my Explore and we won't be on Alan's Explore. Um, so really what I can recommend for you is try to create content that's dynamic and shareable and exciting, and then potentially people will uh, engage with it and then that will drive to more people's Explore. But no, there's not a, and also, um, if you're in Japan or Australia, Reels is taking up a ton of space on Explore and it's the lowest saturated surface. And IGTV is the second lowest saturated surface. Oh. So if you uh, lean into those two tools, you can actually get into the space a lot more easily because you're not fighting with so many people. Good advice. Jane Yi just asked a question uh, that we're very interested in um, knowing as well um, the answer to. In terms of having a face to represent your brand, do you rely on that within your brand account or does there need to be crossover with personal accounts? So if Alan and I wanted to promote the Splice Asia account, which currently has four posts, uh, we don't know what to do with it. Do we, you know, liquidate Splice Asia and we just post, you know, individually from our individual accounts? How does it work? I mean, it, it really depends on your audience. There's not like a magic answer to that. You've got to put the time and energy into both sets of accounts is the one thing I would say. So if you have the bandwidth to do that, um, I think you should build for the individual and also build for the brand. But you have to not have Alan's account with 500 posts and the Splice account with four posts um, because then the, there's not really much point talking back and forth with the two. You need to balance it a little bit better. Um, so you can do this two ways. If you don't have the time and energy and, and resources to have a strong individual account and a strong uh, brand account, then just lean into the brand account and put your face to that brand account, I would suggest. Cool. Uh, a question from our friend, Mirga. Uh, how can publishers maximize the reach of branded content on behalf of their advertisers? The, uh, well, I can only speak to organic. Um, there's a whole team that deals with 
the, the ad side of life. But in terms of organic, um, the first thing I, I, I get creators call me all the time, Nikki, you're down ranking my branded content posts. You have deleted me off Instagram. Something's happened. And my quick answer is no. Uh, but when people are creating branded content posts, they somehow lose all their creativity. And all of a sudden, it's like them with a can next to their head doing a post. So my first rule for branded content is do not post the piece of content if you wouldn't have posted it without the brand in it because that just tells you it's not a very creative, dynamic, engaging, interesting piece of content. It's probably not going to do well with a can in it as well. Um, so that is the first way to get maximum reach is create some great content. Um, and then secondly is just make sure that um, you're, you're, you know, create, you're utilizing all of the tools. So if it's a piece of stories content, for example, you're you maybe using a polling sticker in it or like engaging people in a different way. Um, or if it's a feed post, you are um, potentially your caption could engage people in some like legitimate organic conversation, that type of thing. It's pretty much the easiest way. Not spammy, uh, like for like type, that will pretty much not work. <laughs> but what's your favorite flavor or something like that? You know, it just depends on what your brand and content post is. Pleats Magazine wants to know, will IG be looking to provide an alternative, more accessible feature to swipe up for more? Um, and this link for smaller independent publications who have yet to reach the 10K minimum to enable this feature? Yeah, I think that's a question that we get a lot. Um, I believe that they were looking at allowing people with less than 10K followers to do that and maybe getting only tested. I actually thought that they had rolled that out. So I will look into that actually. It's a great follow-up question for me. Um, and secondly, we are always reviewing different ways that people can engage with tools like that. Um, so product feedback is a gift and I will make sure I get that to our product team. A uh, question from Mike Savage. Um, which, which journalists are, using, are doing the most interesting things on Instagram? Uh, could be the original use of features on offer or how Instagram is used to communicate or make an impact. Um, there's a lot of people that are doing a really good job. I think Anderson Cooper is, is somebody who gets creative with behind the scenes and really leans into the CNN accounts as well. Um, and then I think if you go and look at Refinery29, they leverage their um, their producers a lot and their reporters. Uh, a more local one is Pedestrian uh, in Australia. They do a really good job in terms of how they um, lean into the entertaining side of things and really drive like a lot of youth um, to engage with the content. Um, Nat Geo also do a fantastic job. Um, bon Appetit, there's, there's, quite, there's quite a lot, quite a lot. And my other favorite tip is if you want to know um, who to follow, look at somebody like Bon Appetit magazine and look at who they're following. Because generally speaking, they'll follow a small amount of people uh, and they're usually accounts that they're inspired by. So go and look at who Anderson Cooper is following. Go and look at who Bon Appetit magazine is following and follow those accounts. That's fantastic. Alan, well, I, see, I see one of our Spice, Splice fellows pitching a story to us for beta. Yeah, I like this case study. You know, <laughs> journalists to follow on exactly. Instagram. Yes. May that be a hint to all of you. May that be a hint to Splice fellows. Do it. So we're all running right now. We're, we're just going to squeeze one last question here. Actually, the person who asked that question has just left, Angel. Uh, Angel is asking, is there a way to have several users participate in a live session? Actually, this is kind of of self-interest here. We were talking off of uh, off mic here. If, if you had to do Splice Beta on Instagram live, how would you have done it? So this is kind of related to that. Um, last answer. At the moment, it's just live with, uh, you can put many people in the room, but I wouldn't recommend it. They are testing a tool that will allow more people to go live. I think it's just about stability and engineering in the back end <laughs> once we can figure that out. You know, we built this app for uh, people to upload photos uh, 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 many, many years ago, and now we're trying to create, you know, monetization <laughs> tools into it and live tools, and it's getting pretty full. So yeah, but we're working on it. That, that we get a lot of questions about. Uh, I just want to sneak in one last one uh, from from our friend Shipo in uh, in South Africa. Why is Instagram's I, why is IG Lives 
uh, limited only to 59 minutes? Um, I think it's probably, again, a back-end engineering thing and not so much uh, we've decided that that's the magic number for success. Um, I think it's literally just down to what the system can handle. Okay. Well, listen, um, I think it's probably time for us to wrap up, folks. Um, we've, we've gone over our stipulated uh, hour by about three minutes. Um, listen, I just wanted uh, to thank everybody. I know Corinne has asked whether the chat will also be recorded. We will send you links. Uh, we'll try and get those together, and we'll send those out. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for, for your questions. I know we didn't get through all of them but we will try. Please go to, this is going to be up on YouTube. It's also going to be up on our Facebook page. Please go and get all of the beta sessions on there. Uh, thank you so much, Nikki. I, I know I've learned a lot. Uh, we need to up our Instagram game. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be checking your account. Back. <laughs> uh, well, it'll send, take you send about- Send us love, send us love. It, it, it'll take you about 0.3 seconds for you to check our account. No, you're um, going to do it live tomorrow, aren't you? <laughs> thank you so much, people. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's been wonderful. Come back for more beta. <laughs>